Hi, my name's Jason. It's week seven, day 46 of my full-time chronic pain rehabilitation journey. Today, I'm gonna talk about a weighty topic, miracles. Do you believe in them? I think I might because I'm living in one. I'll share the details shortly. At the end of the video, I'm gonna share an important tip about how to prevent injuries, so stay tuned. First though, a quick status update. I had my sixth dose of ketamine today, so I'm coming down from a ketamine treatment if you watch my video from two days ago, you'll have noticed that I was very emotional during that time. One of the side effects of a psychedelic called ketamine that helps with anxiety and depression is that when you come down, you, your emotions are still right on the surface, kind of trying to find a way to get out. So it is possible that I'm gonna struggle during this video as well. I'm also kind of just tired and fatigued from the treatment. So please bear with me, I'm doing the best that I can but this is kind of what it takes to fight for my life and make these videos. I have to do it when I don't feel well. And right now, I don't feel very good. I have a personal best. On the decline squat, I was able to do 12 repetitions at 305 pounds. So I've crossed the 300 pound boundary. I didn't do it quickly. The last time I told you about this, I'd only done eight reps at 209 pounds, and that was from a couple weeks ago. So. I've been gradually incrementing the weights, very important, don't go too fast, and I'm now over 300 pounds. At this point, I'm gonna slow things way, way down. So I will be adding weight very, very incrementally, and my gains probably won't be quite as large or as quick, but I will be making them steadily and surely. I have a new doctor, and I found myself on his table. He was sticking needles into my back and twisting them, and I was crying, but I wasn't crying for the reason you might think. I was crying because I think I found someone who's the last piece of the puzzle to my rehabilitation journey. I've noticed through my rehabilitation and all the stuff I've been doing that my back is still really tight. I kind of call it a cinder block. And he, he actually mentioned when he was twisting the needles that they were bending instead of twisting. So I'm so tight that he almost couldn't do the needle twisting. And my concern is I've been feeling this increasing tightness as the weeks have gone on. And I, that's why I feel like I'm gonna have a shutdown because my back is just tightening up and it feels worse and kind of worse and worse. This therapy might be able to help me loosen that up. It's the equivalent of a deep, deep tissue massage. It gets down deeper than anything that I've ever done before. And it's novel, I haven't tried it. So uh, just so you know, it's called dry needling, if you're interested. And that coupled with another treatment that he's doing with me called traction. I've had this before in, a, in the form of spinal decompression. Um, should allow me to loosen up the cinder block, break it up a little bit, and allow my back to move like it's supposed to move, which is really the last thing that I needed to make this all work. And how I got to here is kind of a miracle, which is what I'm gonna talk about next. I think I might be living in a miracle a miracle that includes me, but I think that the equation, the thing that made the miracle possible, is transferable. It's not specific to me. I'm not unique. This isn't one of those uh, unique sightings of a religious figure that only happens if you look at a cloud a certain way or something like that. This is something I think that can be duplicated in your life in the same way that it's happened in mine. I kind of stumbled upon it. I didn't know the terminology for it, but it's playing out to be a miracle even so. And I wanna walk through uh, each step of the miracle that's been occurring in my life so you can kind of see the pattern. Now, if you don't believe in God or believe in miracles, then you probably believe at least in coincidence. So you can ascribe coincidence to all of this. I won't be offended. I don't require you to believe as I do, but I do believe that someone's been helping me. And I think it's pretty evident as I trace back my story to its origins. So I'm gonna take a little bit of time and go through all of these steps, you can see the story unfold. The first thing I had was a prompting that I needed to do more. I needed to go all in. In its initial form, it was very primitive. It was like, go to the pool, swim as long as you can until you can't swim anymore, do it every day, no matter how much it hurts, and just plow through it, plow through it, no matter what. It was kind of a dumb plan, but the instinct was correct. It took some refinement over time. I had this prompting a couple more times, over the course of about two to three years. I almost pulled the trigger last year. I'm kind of glad that I didn't though, because I think I've had some experiences since then that made this time work, whereas last time might not have worked. Um, the plan just was too primitive at that point, 
but now I think it's refined enough to where it actually has a chance of succeeding, which is why I'm telling you what I think could be a miracle story. Of course, I don't know if it's a miracle because the story's not over yet, so we'll have to wait and see how it plays out. I was listening to a YouTube commentator, and he talked about how we have these windows of opportunity to change, and I think this is one of those windows for me. And we don't always embrace them, but I took this one. So my instinct to go all in was correct, but it just had to be done smartly and incrementally, which is something that I've done. So I had this instinct to go all in, but the thing that made me go all in was a psychedelic called ayahuasca. It's a plant from South America. The last time I was voluntarily institutionalized in a psychiatric hospital, I met a patient there. It's kind of ironic. Um, she was, uh, has a PhD in psychology. You can laugh about that if you want, but uh, I don't. Anyway, I love her with all of my heart, and she is one of my very best friends now. I friended her on Facebook, and I noticed that as her life progressed, it was getting better and better and better. So I figured either she's faking it or she's on to something. And she shared with me that she was part of a group that does uh, ayahuasca as part of a religious ceremony and that this had helped her. And so she invited me to come down and participate. So I did that. And I described this in other videos, so I won't belabor the point, but it was a, a real waking up for me. And I believe this event is what precipitated my deciding to uh, go all in and pull the trigger finally in and, and take that window of change opportunity that I had and make it a reality. Then I have an old friend that I hadn't talked to for a long time. Um, my friendship list had diminished quite a bit and I had been kind of avoiding him. And I decided to reach out to him finally and face him. And he shared a story with me about psychedelics and how it helped his marriage. So there was a little more evidence here that there's something about these psychedelics. I'd also been listening to a podcast by a man named Sam Harris. Um, I use his Waking Up app to meditate. And he had a couple doctors come on and talk about the medicinal benefits of psychedelics, how they're quite amazing in treating a whole host of uh, conditions. And so those three things made it credible to me that there's something about psychedelics. I need to go down uh, to Southern Utah and partake of ayahuasca and see what this is all about. And I'm so glad that I did because I think that's what woke me up and allowed me to have the courage and the will to finally act on that instinct that I had that I needed to go all in. Going to that ceremony also taught me about something else, ketamine, which I'm now taking, which I took today. I didn't know about it. I didn't know it was available clinically. Someone down there told me about it. So if I hadn't gone to the ayahuasca ceremony, I wouldn't have found out about the ketamine. And it turns out when I got back, I found out that my niece is doing ketamine and so now I'm actually going to her clinic. So this is kind of an example of like a domino effect of how all these things kind of play together. I can't really chart out exactly how they all play together, but I'm gonna to try to create a pattern and hopefully you can follow me through it. This is kind of a side tangent. My wife is a nutrition nut. And so I had already been flirting with eating more plant-based, whole foods, minimal animal products for quite some time. And I also, so I was able to take what I'd learned from that and the practice that I'd done and apply it. So now I am essentially plant-based all the time, whole foods all the time, and eat minimal animal products only on special occasions. So my diet was already kind of lining up uh, tangentially to what was going on with the ayahuasca and what's gonna go on with the ketamine and what's gonna go on with my full-time rehab. So it's all kind of coming together now. One of the things I'm doing differently this time, I've talked about them is supportive routines. So supportive routines are warm-ups, um, anything you do to recover, including like a cool down. So what got that all kick-started kick was I've been going to a physical therapist before and he um, had a hot laser and he hot lasered my back one time and it made it really, really mobile. So I only did that one time and I noticed how much it, it popped when I got on a foam roller. And I was like, wow, it's never moved that much before. And so I took the foam roller uh, idea, I kept running with it, but I ditched the hot laser because after, a couple of days after I did the hot laser, my back hurt really bad. I'm like, oh, that must not be good for it. That must not be good for it. But planted the seed, the idea that, hey, I think I can actually mobilize that area better. And so when I started this full-time rehab, the first thing I had decided to do was use the hot laser to warm everything up. It was like the baseline of my supportive routines. And so I'm like, well, what if I keep it mobilized? You know, last time I just got it mobilized once, it hurt, I stopped. What if I just keep doing it over and over and over again while I exercise? So that was the beginning of my supportive routines. I have a brother-in-law who's an ultra marathoner. And during his training, 
he went to a recovery center called Recharge Sports Performance. So he told me about the Recharge Sports Performance place, and I signed up and went over there um, and started doing those recovery routines. I had no idea such a place existed, and it was my brother-in-law, who just happened to be running a marathon, that found out about it, that told me about it. So there's another domino thread. Um, and I met a guy in the sauna at the gym. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you how I got to this gym in a second. But I met a guy at the sauna, in the sauna at the gym, and he started telling me about um, cryotherapy. And so I started doing cold tubbing at the recovery center that my brother-in-law told me about because of the guy uh, in the sauna at the gym. I also started taking cold showers. And because he told me about Indian sweat lodges, I got the idea to stay in the dry sauna and sweat a lot longer. And then I saw a guy stretching in the sauna, so I started adding stretching in the sauna. So all these things are starting to play together um, kind of organically. I didn't plan this, it just happened. 